Hey, this is Joe with The Recording Revolution. Today we're going to tackle how to get vocals to sit in the mix. This is typically something that happens for me later in the mix during step four. If you don't have a mixing process, I have a five-step process that I use every time, whether it's two tracks or 200, uh, and you can have it for free. Just go to recordingrevolution.com slash five-step mix to download your free copy. Early in my mix process, step two is when I do the static mix, which is all about just balancing volumes and panning. What is this motion? Uh, but I typically ignore the lead vocal during this phase. Yeah, you could set levels and get it somewhere close, but I find that most lead vocals need a lot of work before they're going to even come close to sitting where they need to sit volume-wise. So I typically just have the lead vocal off or muted until I get to step four, where I'll start doing the stuff we're going to talk about in this video. The two main tools we use to get the vocal to sit are EQ and compression. But real quickly, you may be wondering, what do you even mean by getting the vocal to sit in the mix? It's a little difficult to explain, but uh, you've heard it a thousand times. So think of your favorite album. In most genres of music, if this is the level of the overall instrumental music, the vocal is typically like right here. Generally speaking, it's maybe just a little bit louder than everything else, but it doesn't jump way up here, and it doesn't sound like it's a completely separate thing from the music, right? It's not so much louder than the music that it does, feels like it doesn't belong, but it's also not way down here where you have to strain to hear what the singer is singing, right? It finds that happy medium where it's not too quiet, not too loud, it's just right here in the middle. That's what we're talking about. The problem, of course, is a, the human voice doesn't naturally sit right there. It has a lot of fluctuation. And there's kind of two places where that fluctuation happens. The first is with frequencies, and that's more static, right? Every voice sounds different. Every microphone, every recording has certain frequencies that are in accentuated or are missing, and we can deal with those with EQ. The second, of course, is compression. But let's start with EQ. So there are certain frequencies that cause a vocal to poke out of the mix more than others. So what I mean by that is you're listening to the mix, and it may be that the vocal sounds fine for 80% of the time, but there are certain notes that the singer sings or certain tones of the vocal that cause it to not sit right here nice on top of the mix, but to jump out. And those are things that we want to deal with. Now, you initially think jump out, deal with, those sound like words we would use to describe compressors. And that's true, but you can also deal with them with EQ, especially if it's just overall the vocal has too much of a certain frequency that's just prominent throughout the vocal, or every time the vocalist sings lower, it's this boomy mess down there. We'll deal with that with EQ so that the compressor doesn't have to deal with it, and then we'll add compression. So let me show you what that sounds like. The yellow track here is a raw, unmixed vocal, and you're hearing that over a finished mix of the instrumentals. Here's what that sounds like. My problem is our ears are weird that's just that's that's a problem so listen to the soloed vocal my hand and heart move oh sounds fairly balanced when soloed but when we listen to it in the mix it seems like most of what we hear is the lower frequency material like the it's just the way it's either our ears or just the way things blend together. It ends up making the vocal sound a little bit muffled in the mix. My so for most of the sounds, all we're hearing almost on the vocal are the lower frequencies. So that's why we're going to start with EQ here to balance that out. Because on certain notes, I'd like to turn the vocal up, but I can't because it already feels too loud because of those lower frequencies. Right? So let's add an EQ here. Uh, I'll add Pro EQ. First thing I'll do is do a high pass filter just to get rid of any kind of rumble there, and we'll do this in solo. My hand and heart move onward. And that already thins up the vocal a lot. It seems aggressive, but go listen to any vocal release in the last couple decades, and you'll hear a nice, bright, clear vocal. Um, but I do still feel like there needs to be some work here in this kind of mid, low, mid range. So let's pull that down. My hand and heart move onward. There's the warmth of the vocal, which is wonderful. It's a dynamic microphone, um, but it's too much. I don't want to get rid of it entirely, but I don't want it to be quite so prominent. So we're going to do a little bit of a cut here. 
My hand and heart move onward embrace. Feels pretty good. How's it sound in the mix? My hand and heart move okay, so I cut a little around 500, 600 hertz as well. That feels pretty good. So now, at least frequency-wise, if we're just thinking in terms of the balance of the frequencies of the vocal, it seems to mesh with the rest of the instruments a lot better. My hand and heart Now, volume-wise, we're still losing some of the notes, right? That's not something we're going to solve with compression. That's something we're going to. Well, no, that's not something we're going to solve with EQ. We're going to solve that with compression. So let me add a compressor here. We'll just use the stock compressor. And for something like this, so think of compressors as trash compactors, right? Growing up, I never knew anyone who had one of these, but my parents had a trash compactor in the kitchen. So it, you would pull it out. You put your trash in, you push it in, and when it got full, you'd push a button and it would go and compress it down. Then you could put more trash in. So eventually it would be this super compacted like brick of trash that was almost impossible to get out and throw away. But um, that's kind of what compressors do. They take all these high peaks and they pull them down, get them under control. So then you can take everything, right? The low stuff's down here. The whispery falsetto stuff is down here. The high belty stuff is up here. If we smush the high belty stuff to here, then we can turn everything up like this. Now, this is louder. The low falsetto stuff is louder. And this stuff is still nice and loud. Uh, and they're, But they're closer together, so we typically can hear them more. So I'm typically on a vocal going to use pretty aggressive compressor settings. So something like, you know, four or five to one. Pretty quick attack, pretty quick release, so 10 and 50 or so. And I'm going to pull the threshold down until we're seeing a good chunk of gain reduction happening. My hand and heart move onward. So the louder parts, I want to be pretty squashed. And then the quieter parts, whether they get compressed or not, I don't care as much because they're going to be turned up. So let's regain that volume that we lost using the makeup gain, and that means, makeup gain to me is just, this is the thing that brings up the quiet stuff. We've turned the loud stuff down, so now we can lift up everything else. Okay, here we go. My hand and heart move onward embrace your voice will promise. You hear how that will promise, that's a whispered part, is almost the same volume as the loud part. That's the beauty of compression, because now if we listen in the mix, that vocal's probably gonna be just sitting right there where it needs to sit. We could probably even get a little more volume out of it. So that's about as much compression as I'll use on a single compressor. But if you feel like this is a bonus, if you feel like it could use a little more, but you don't want to add more compression here, you can add another compressor. Now, you may have fun compressors you want to use. This is just the stock compressor. But this is what I've called butter compression for years. It's kind of based on an old way of compressing on an SSL channel strip. So you bring the threshold all the way down. You bring the ratio all the way down. And you go like 50-50 on the attack and release. And then, right now it's not doing anything, right? Because the ratio is one to one. Then you just slowly increase the ratio, probably to something like 1.2 to one. And it's gonna be basically compressing everything a little bit. And it adds this nice kind of smoothing element to kind of, it balances nicely with the previous compressor because this one, if I mute everything, this one is hitting all the peaks, right? The peaks are getting slammed. It's kind of, it's an aggressive compressor. It's what you think about when you think about compression. This one, if we bring the ratio up a little bit, is not really getting peaks as much as it is just any time the vocal is singing, it's doing a little bit of squishing. And you can see that here. Partially because it's only working on the vocal after it's gone through the first compressor. But it can be pretty pleasant to listen to. So let me just hit, I just made all my adjustments without even listening to it, which is kind of fun. But let's listen to it now. I'll leave this second compressor off, then I'll turn it on. Promise. 
that will promise felt more like it was sitting in one spot than going, will promise. Listen to it again. Here it is without. Those lower frequencies went woo, woo, woo. Now with the second compressor, it's a lot more smooth volume wise. So you can see how the compressor is interacting with certain frequencies and helping tame them a little bit. If you get to this point in the mix and you think, hmm, that vocal's not quite tone wise what I want now that I've added two compressors. It's sitting on top nicely, but I'd like to take care of some of the low end. Instead of going back and adjusting the EQ before the compressors, add another EQ. That way you're not messing with anything that's currently happening. We're just EQing the current sound. Uh, so pro EQ, a second EQ at the end of the chain, and I can just do a single cut somewhere. So promise to save you from your sadness. So now we've done some good work on this, but now the sibilance has come out too much, right? Which is a normal thing. So we'll add a de -esser and very quickly deal with that. Now that vocal is sitting right on top of the mix. That's what I'm talking about. Now in the final mix of this, I added like slapback delay and some reverb and things to help it like add, be, feel less dry on top of this, which was just wonderful. But as far as getting vocals to sit, this is the process. This is, it's some variation of this every single time for me. And if you're not doing this, give it a shot on your next mix. I think it'll help. Ultimately, mixing is all about knowing what sound you want and knowing how to use the tools to get there. I can help you with that, especially if you don't really have a process. My five-step mix guide does just that. It's a great way to get started if you're new to me and my world, uh, but you can have it for free. So go to recordingrevolution.com slash five-step mix to download your free copy. Thanks for watching. Happy mixing.